Yo, JD here, Till Limits, and as you can see, back on F1 2021 here today, and it's been quite a while since I've sat in the cockpit and done a commentary. I was actually on holiday last week with my girlfriend, and like my last holiday I had a few weeks before this, they released a new track while I was on holiday, and this was Imla, and they didn't just release a new track. They released the new Red Bull livery and the new handling model as well. Yeah, so that really was pretty painful. I might as well go on holiday more often because we'll just get more tracks released. That might be a plan for the future. But we are here at Imola today and you can see by the title of this video, this was probably the toughest time trial I have ever done in my life and it was for those exact reasons as I said this is a new track um, that's just come out on the game I am familiar with this circuit because I have driven it on F1 2013 which feels like an absolute lifetime ago but of course track isn't going to be exactly the same and the people I'm going against here they've had multiple days to get up to speed because with a time trial, and this really goes from myself personally, I find that you can make small improvements throughout different days in the future. So you might be sweating it for about 60 to 20 minutes, and you can see our first track invalidation. It wouldn't be a world record attempt without a track invalidation, and I promise you I do not do that on purpose. But as I was saying... Quite typically, when you are sweating a track in time trial, you can spend one hour, two hours, and just find you hit a brick wall, but then come on the next day or two days later and find improvements quite quickly. And that's because I feel, like I always suggest to people, you need to really reset your mind in terms of how you are driving a track and just having that break, having a good night's sleep, can definitely do that so we are just doing it all in one go you can see by these laps we're running a default setup you can see a sigh of pain we did a few seconds ago that this is going to be tough because this is my only attempt i'm going to be doing this and it's against people who have had a good few days to have some good night's rest to adapt their driving style for this track so you can see really really struggling here and you can see the first up we did i think was like a 16 zero which wasn't too bad at all uh, to be honest i think it was that bad and the aim with the default setup is to get around within a second of what the fastest time is so this would be a low 14 that i'm aiming for here world record is a 13 a 4 or maybe even a 3 if i'm not mistaken but you can see as usual as we are doing these world record attempts we just keep on going that's the way I really like to learn a circuit. And again, this will probably be quite a long video, but I hope you enjoy it because it will show you what the true perspective is when you're learning a track. It's not just even the Yano Otmeers of this world. Well, maybe not Yano Otmeer because he's just a, a different breed. But other people who are very fast, they don't just come on and set a world record straight away. They just need to build it up as well. Um, so that's what I'm trying to showcase here, my journey to improve. So you can see again, we invalidated the last corner. And although this lap's going to be invalidated, we're just going to keep on going again. And this is just a strategy that I've always used. And it's why I feel I'm better in the race as well. I'm online because I feel my consistency has really been improved by adopting this technique. But also time trial and one that pace has always been probably my slight Achilles heel in terms of my driving style. I always like to push 90, 95% in the race and I'm able to do that lap all the time. Whereas in time trial and especially Imola, you just have to give it everything. And that's why this track I think is probably the hardest time trial because it is just so ruthless. You cannot just coast around or anything at all. There's only really one line for each corner that you can really uh, adopt. And if you don't do that, you're just gonna be losing uh, so much time. But you can see compared to our previous two laps, we are quite a bit up on our lap here. And 
harsh reminder, don't go on the inside of the curbs here. You can kiss the curbs, but you don't want to go on the inside of them because otherwise it will do something like that. So we're just going to keep on going until we get, if we can get, to this low 14. So go for his tab one, kissing this, and you can mount this, but avoiding the sausage curbs, that's the key. Avoiding those orange, yellow sausage curbs. Going through it here, I go down to sip gear for this corner and really missed that apex quite badly, but we are still quite a bit up on our time. So it is progress, not perfection, is my philosophy when you are learning a track as well. And I always just try and remember what I did on the previous laps in terms of the small mistakes I make. And then when I enter that corner, then I try and replicate. Like going through this one there, I went a little bit wide on the apex. So next lap, I'll remember that and try and go a little bit tighter. Going through to here, not using enough of the curves, but still getting a good exit. But you could use much, much more of the curves than I was doing there. Going through to going up into eighth gear, in fact, not the best go through there. Just carrying a little bit too much speed and a decent ish exit in the end. Let's see what lap time this is going to be. It's a 15.3. So we are improving, but still a long way to go. So we're just going to keep on going. Once again, let's see how much we could improve this time. So not clock the curb on the inside here, going half a tenth up for this first sector. Remember, we understood through the right hander. So going through here, we just asked, do we understand this time? No, we don't. And you can see the time that we make. So in my mind, my muscle memory now knows that I need to be a bit tighter and to go on this curb as well. So you can see, as a result of that, we're actually two temps up. Go through it as I hit the 50 meter boards. What's going to happen here? Do we go wide? No, we don't. We just about keep it track limits. Go for the second right hander. This one here. Do we go tighter this time? Yes, we do. And you can see on the exit how much time we've actually gained. Are we going to use much more curb? Going through this corner, yes, much more curve, much more curve for there as well. And you can see the lap time is rewarding us. So that's a really a perfect example of how, or reason why I just keep on going. Because it just allows me to build up muscle memory. This time controlling the pace, much, much better curve through here. And you can see just by comparing myself to the previous lap, we've improved to a 15-0 now. But we're still not done yet. We're just going to keep on going even more. So now this is going to be our third lap in a row. Let's see, can we be more aggressive? So every single lap, I just try and add that aggression. You can see 900s up going through this first sector. Try and remember what I did on the previous lap. Keep it nice and tight through here. And you can see again, two temps up now. So that's the difference between great drivers and esports drivers, I would say. Or just good versus very good. They just do that fraction difference through the corner and it, you can see how much time you can gain by just getting that slight correction that slight apex you can see we've gone wide here now and we were carrying enough speed but we didn't gain enough on the exit you could just gain so much time if you gain half a tenth per corner then that's going to be a lot of lap time and you can see again the more laps you do the more confident the more aggressive you become and that's why I always encourage people, if they don't feel they have the pace at the start, is to keep this repetition going. And this technique, I think, is very, very useful. It's like you learning an instrument. You need to keep that repetition going, keep on practicing. And once you hit that lap time, once you are able to play that song consistently, then it will become second nature to you. So that is always the number one advice I have for when you are learning a track. So we're still on board with the default setup, so still not quite happy yet. I wanted to get a low uh, 14 if I could, but you can see the curbs really are punishing you there. But I'm gonna keep on going once again. And uh, to some people, hopefully this isn't boring, but for me, I feel this is quite important to show how I feel is the best way myself in terms of learning, because if you just keep on resetting the, the lap and you keep on starting from the first sector each time, and the first sector is your difficult part. If you just keep on resetting, by the time you get to sector two or three, you're just not going to be used to the track as well. So I always just keep on going as much as you can. You can see we got much tighter 
going up that hill there. See, now going to Chicane. Let's see what we could do going through here. Very, very tricky corner, but doing that very well. The best we've done so far. So, two and a half temps up on our fastest lap so far. Coming through here, how do we do? We do this quite nicely. Short straight into fourth gear, using all the track, kissing this curb, using all the track on the exit. And we're over two and a half temps up. Going across the line, what's this going to be? It's a 14. Point four now, and I felt that was pretty satisfactory to now go into the setups and try the best setup itself. But you can see a lot of people have done this track, so this is a very hard time trial to do. Everyone's very motivated at the moment. We're in a stage of the game where people are really reaching their potential. And for me, as I said, time trial, one over, one up pace. We definitely have won that pace, but compared to some others, I feel if I can improve that area, it, we would be a very, very strong candidate. Because um, I feel the race pace is always and has always been there as well. So now we have loaded in the world record setup of FRA LMG, if I'm not mistaken. And immediately going through that last corner, I can see how much more a twitchy and responsive so let's see what it's going to do going through into here and you can see the delta even with a little mistake we're over one tenth up so gaining a lot of time with the 10-8 wings a lot more downfall so we're running before and you can see again still with some mistakes with stuff let's see what we could do going through the apex and just see how much more apex speed we are carrying through here so a pretty good first attempt so far the car's gone from very understeery to now very uh, over very uh, responsive in what you want to do. So let's see what we could do going through to here, carrying a lot of speed going through it, getting a good exit, so about two and a half attempts up. So aiming on track for low 14 at this stage. Let's see what we could go through to here. I was still wasn't used to the car. I was trying to turn it at the same point as I did with my default setup, but with the much more uh, responsiveness, much more downforce, the car just turned in too early there so like we did with the suck setups we're just going to keep on going and quite typically when i use someone's setup i stay on board for yeah three to five laps um just to see how it feels um because you definitely don't want to give up on the setup sometimes the faster setups are actually in fact the hardest to drive but i always try and adopt a more of a race setup kind of mentality hence why a lot of my stuff are a bit more on the understeer staple side but they are much more beneficial for the race being caught out by this curb once again and another sigh of pain i think that's about five side pains <laughs> that we have done so far this time we're just slightly down and taking a little bit too much liberty going through into that chicane there let's see what we can do and we were struggling to actually beat our time because we kept on invalidating going through into here let's see how nicely we could do this we're doing this very very well so far so about almost one and a half attempts up and with this we could go flat out into this corner hugging the inside of this and doing that very nice as well getting a lot of time through the apex you can see how much time we've gained through the apex also a little bit on the exit there very very awkward corner at the top of this hill 50 meters ball that's where we want to be turning in we decide to use fifth gear on this occasion here now we're into this one use all the curb on the entry and that was done very very nicely but this chicane i think is probably the hardest corner on the track here let's see how well we do this really trying to cut the second part of it we did it okay but it's still about level of what we were doing with the stock setup so Going through these last two corners, this is where we should be gaining the most amount of time. You can see over three times up, going through this last corner, missing the apex. So again, didn't really gain that much time. It was a bit of a sloppy lap, but going across the line, it's a 14.1 with plenty of time to improve. So now we're going to be pushing the boundaries a little bit more, going through into here, a bit too much of that curb, and we do the same thing as we've done before. You really don't want to be doing that. As the top of the hill, we're staying in sixth gear this time. Get the track in validation. But again, we're still going to continue. We're quite a bit up on this time as well. Hooking the inside of this corner. Let's see how much we can improve going through into this chicane. As we go into this chicane, just two hearts. And 
Yeah, honestly, I think this is one of the hardest tracks. You have to be so on the edge. If you go that little bit too far, the car just does not like it whatsoever. Going through the sickest of corners, didn't do that particularly well. We're about half a tenth down. So we'll go throw everything going into this corner. Say nice and tight. Actually missing the curve this time. You can see we've actually lost time to the Delta. Into this one is an uphill corner. So you can actually carry much more speed than you think. Let the camber do the work for you. But we actually get a terrific exit coming off here. Going to sixth gear. How well do we do this? We do this very, very well here. So a tenth up on our time so far. Going through into here. Do we do this nicely? Yes, we do. Touch the curb a bit too much. Unsettled the car quite a bit. So we lost about a hundredth of a second. Let's see what we can do. Go through it. Taking a lot of curb on each of these. Not running out too out wide. And we'll go still maintain our tenth advantage going into this penultimate corner. I really enjoy this corner. Downhill corner. Carrying a lot of speed through this apex. Happy to use all the curb. Kiss this one. Use all of it on the exit you can see how much time we've gained and going across the line what's it going to be it's going to be a 13 point nine four two so our first trip into the 13s finally and you can see like i said before once you hit a lap time you find yourself being able to consistently do it much much more and even with a poor exit here we're actually going to improve our time to a 13.913 so we're just going to continue on using more aggression going into this turn one and you can see just being a bit more aggressive but again if you take too much curve for that second part it just really really doesn't like it but once i hit a 13.9 i actually started to struggle um, quite a bit because as i said before at the beginning of this video i was approaching the 50 minute mark at this point which for me is actually quite a long time on a time trial Usually I spend about 40 minutes or something like that. But I feel once you go past 50 to 60, that's when you really need to be looking um, to have a break. Um, because I feel like just driving more and more, it's like working the muscle in the gym. The harder you push, sometimes it's going to deteriorate a little bit and you just develop uh, bad uh, driving patterns. And I think that's what was really starting to happen um, to me here. So this is probably one of the worst time trials I could have chosen right now. As I said, people have had multiple days, but I feel it's really important to show people of what a true uh, perspective is or what my journey would be in a time trial. So I, I guarantee, I think if I came back to this in two or three days, I'd probably be beating these times uh, quite comfortably. But you'll see at the end of the video, I was pretty happy with the end result um, in the end here, but definitely I would recommend people to really just step away after an hour or so if you want to try it again later then definitely do that but i would not recommend going over an hour one to three hours straight just doing a time trial i don't think it's that uh, counterproductive but i'm going to show you what my results were when i think i spent about 90 minutes in total on this tt here and you can see once you hit a plateau starting to get a little bit mentally fatigued here it was started to be a bit harder to um, hit those that's why i felt like whatever i did just wasn't improving um at all it's very very hard to reset yourself if you just keep on going all the time here but going through here do we do a good last corner yes we do so that was definitely one of the corners we could have gained a lot of time on and now we've broken into the 13.8 uh, so with an 888 Four here so that's giving me a little bit more confidence still only 78 on the leaderboard shows how popular this track actually is at this stage here but doing a pretty nice first sector just about surviving into let's see how much time we can make up going through it here hooking this curb do we stay on the track yes we do just about so about neck and neck with our time last time want to hook this curb on the inside but we actually get a quite a good exit on this lap so this is quite a good one so far still some time to find for the rest of the lap Sip gear, what do we do going through it here? We don't do that too badly. Lost a bit of time to our Delta flat out for this, right? Kissing this curb on the inside and yeah, just not committed enough going through into there. Going to the last quarter, we're half a second, or sorry, half a tenth up going through it here. I think this lap is invalidated though, but 
it will show me again of what is truly possible to go across the line is an 8.62 so that's why i always complete the invalidated laps just to if i feel it's not a harsh invalidation then that's usually why i would continue because i know which corners i can gain the more time on but we do a very good first sector here as we continue to proceed go for it here, hit this inside and just about staying on the track pretty much a mirror image of the last lap we saw can we do a good exit this time yes we do coming up to the top of the hill a bit of a blind corner but you have a nice reference point of the 50 meter board and we actually do that the best we have done so far now coming through into can we do this this time correctly yes we do you want to kiss this curb let settle the car and launch on the exit as the curb starts that's what we want to be breaking cut this one cut this one as so much as you can not too much on the exit and this was a very very good lap the best chicane we've done by an absolute mile so far here now coming through into this let's see what we can do going for this last corner we've done it pretty well before we're losing a bit of time on this exit and going across the line is going to be a 13.802 so i still felt there was a little bit more time we're definitely getting to our near maximum in terms of time limit this is where i started to feel a little bit tired and where a break would probably be needed so i wasn't going to spend too much longer on this but now we're going to go on board a lap which i believe is my fastest lap we have done in the session so far so coming through into tail one as the curb starts that's where we'll be breaking kiss this one mount this one a little bit use it all on the exit and that was a very very good first sector so far 50 meters board that's where we'll be turning in hit this car on the inside and doing this very well you can see we're about a tenth up on this time you want to be using that curb on the inside we actually miss it but get away with it using the camber of the corner to our advantage as we go to the top of the hill let's see how well we do this and we do this not bad not too bad at all going through into here do we kiss the cup on the inside yes we do we get a pretty decent exit coming off this corner so about nine hundreds up on our lap so far going to chicane a little bit of hesitation on the wheel and a bit of a squiggly exit I'm losing quite a bit of time through there losing about half a tenth of a second now going to the penultimate corner as you hit the black box that's where we want to be braking turning use all the car on the exit kiss this use the car on the exit again use a bit of a squiggly exit we're going to prove by 10 what time is this going to be and it's a 13.709 and you can see by my face yeah we're done for today we will definitely come back and do this again but i feel in the circumstances with these three changes a new track new handling model new livery which probably won't affect us but everyone else been able to do many many laps before yeah i was actually quite happy about it. and you can't see it on the leaderboard because my webcam is in the way unfortunately but we were 29th on the leaderboard in the end and another tenth of a second would have put us on the uh, front page i would have put us in p13 with a few abs runners in there as well you can see how close it is, how popular it is. 47,000 player, players have done it in the space of a few days. And everyone's been trying uh, very, very hard as well. So I was actually pretty happy with that. As I said, I really enjoy doing these videos because it really helps me improve as well. Um, this is definitely the area I need to improve. But I really hope it gives people motivation and a perspective of what it really takes. Because I definitely feel... If I come back to this in a few days time, we can start hitting the mid 13s. But this is the set I was running. It's pretty much identical to the uh, world record one, um, but just need a bit more time in it and just a few more days of actually playing. The same with Portimao. When I first did it, I felt I hit a brick wall, but then I went back on it the day afterwards and improved by two or three temps. And two or three temps would pretty much pull us right there. So I really hope you enjoyed this video uh, thank you so much for the support on the channel it's been absolutely amazing as always back to streams this weekend as well and also want to give a shout out to my extra rotation members who have just joined of geo yar colin af jackson chris and luke bailey thank you so much for joining the membership and everyone who has been a part of that 
you want access to my setups and first priority invites to uh, lobbies I'll be doing because I'll be doing many Imola lobbies this week then join that YouTube membership and you will get a first priority invite thank you so much I'll catch you very very soon peace